Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is day four of DIY Buffalo Check Mason Jars in green. And again, we're gonna use the Quart Mason Jar by Kerr. I got a case for $5. Um, I also am gonna use the uh, homemade chalk paint recipe in the link in the description box down below. And this color I'm adding is called Spring Green by Apple Barrel. The bottle's gonna look a little different because it's kind of old. And you're gonna need some rubber bands. This set is from the Dollar Tree and you select the fattest ones I find are the easiest for masking. So we kind of did this technique in um, two autumns ago when we made the candy corn uh, flower pot that I did from 100 years ago. Um, <laughs> Um, and we're going to use the rubber bands like masking tape, but it's so much easier and neater and reusable. Um, first thing we're doing is we're going to coat the jars with our homemade chalk paint. Um, this is white chalk paint. Um, again, the video um, of how to make it is in the description box down below. I find it very inexpensive and it really does give nice coverage. And then you're going to have to break out your ruler. I know I didn't mention the ruler because I'm going to use a ruler and a tape measure. Um, you can use just the tape measure, but the, I just find the ruler a little easier for um, the long ends of the jar. And then the tape measure works for the circumference of the jar. And we're making one inch marks. Um, this jar is, uh, I believe, I keep forgetting to actually like look because I always start, whenever I do the tape measure around, I always start at one and then I end back at... 10 or 11 so I think it's it's either uh, I think it's 10 inches wide because they're even numbers um, 10 inches around the circumference excuse me so it's nice to have them um, in nice even increments so what we're going to do is we're going to put the marks on there um, I put it on all four sides and then we're going to lay a rubber band now you're going to lay your rubber band like masking tape so we're going to paint that bottom stripe we want to make sure that we see the line um, on the right side of the rubber band there basically on the side that you're going to paint you're just going to put the rubber band just past the line um, there so you see that and the same thing goes for the next section um, I found that this is so much easier especially when you can find um, thicker rubber bands um, but you just can paint right up against them and what I really like about that is they kind of leave like a little uh, almost like a tiny ridge of paint like a tiny ridge line of paint and what's really nice about that is when you go to fill in your dark squares which we're going to hand paint you have sort of like a border so that you can um, you know like a border around the square that you have to paint in which is really cool um, and you want to just make sure that you have a rubber band on both sides if you only have two rubber bands you can actually paint each line and then move the rubber bands but I just find it a lot easier to do all of my horizontal lines then come back the next day and do my vertical lines okay and I did have a little difficulty because I wanted to show you that that bottom rubber band um, because the jar and the top rubber band because the jar comes in uh, tapers off then if you use a skinny rubber band they will tend to roll on you um, so I like to be able to make sure if you have those thick rubber bands the Dollar Tree bag of rubber bands had quite a few thick rubber bands in it but you know each one of those that you get is different they don't have the always have the same thing but you usually can get a good variety of thicker rubber bands but the thicker rubber bands with this th th with the more surface area holds on to those tapered areas a lot better okay so once you have it taped off where you have the sections that you have to paint, then we're just going to go ahead and mix out paint. So what I've done is I've taken some of the white chalk paint that we created ourselves, added some of the spring green to it. I really like this spring green that we're going to use full strength when we do our intersections. That's going to be the darkest color. So we just want to get like a medium tone somewhere between um, the green and the white. And we want to get you want to get something that's pleasing to you. Um, you want to basically make a shade that you like. Um, as long as you use the same paint. Um, you'll have the same value, just a different shade, or the same hue, different shade, okay? And now just very carefully paint between the rubber bands. Um, I'm, you know, as you can see there, I'm actually painting on the big rubber band a little bit, which is totally fine. Um, just try not to push the rubber band out of its spacing because we took all that time to line them up um, so they would be pretty perfect, okay? Or as perfect as possible. They're rubber bands after all. <laughs> So with this particular design, I um, am not painting the bottom um, green. This is the first stripe 
um, is going to be white and then the second stripe will be green but whatever you decide however you lay your rubber bands out that's where you're going to paint okay now we wait come back the next day and we're all dry now you're just going to slowly peel off your rubber bands make sure you have no imperfections nice smooth lines love it love it and now we're going to do our horizontal stripes so how do we, I mean our vertical stripes, how do we go ahead and measure that? Like I said, we're gonna use this little fabric tape measure. Um, this one came to me free from Weight Watchers. Um, it was to measure your arms and legs and stuff. <laughs> so it's perfect. And what I've done was I've just picked a um, starting point and um, I've measured one inch. If you look at the jar really closely, um, it, depending on how thick you made your, um, your first coat of paint, you may still be able to see the seam that is the straight line up and down on the side of the jar. And you can go ahead and use that as a reference point if you want, and then just measure one inch off of there. Um, and I found that only one measurement was really necessary for me because I have sort of, a, I don't know, I have, a, I have a more trained eye that can make out a square. But if you have more difficulty keeping your um, horizontals perpendicular, to your vertical lines then you go ahead and put two marks um, and I would definitely use the seam there um, so that you have a straight line up and down all right and then you're just going to wrap the rubber bands um, do the same thing with the spacing make sure when you get to the other side of the rubber band that it is um, on the correct side of the line that you need um, to paint all right and this worked out perfectly uh, five rubber bands with the ten spaces we're only going to paint five of the spaces. I think there's five rubber bands. Maybe there's six. There's six rubber bands. Yeah, there should be. Wait, what? One, two, three, four. No, five. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But now we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to fill in the horizontal, I mean, uh, the vertical stripes. And like I said, um, you just butt right up to that rubber band. Now, when you get to the threading around the neck, the rubber band doesn't hug on the threading. So I'm just using it gently as a guide. I'm not putting too much paintbrush on the, um, on uh, too much paint on the brush so as to not leak under. But I'm just gently um, using it, rubbing my paintbrush up against it and using it as a sort of a guide to make that straight line over the threads. Okay? And you just want to repeat this with all of the five um, uh, vertical stripes that you make. All right? So basically, we're going to do a stripe and skip a space, stripe and skip a space. All right. And then you're going to put it off to dry, come back the next day, and voila, it's dry. We remove our rubber bands and save them because, like I said, they're rubber bands. You can use painting rubber bands, um, keep them in a little jar there, um, and I can use them over and over again. So now um, we're going to fill in the dark squares. On this one, we're not going to do anything more to the white because we painted it with a white chalk paint. If you were around for the last two days, we actually spray painted those two jars. So they one had coverage that got removed by tape and one had very, very minimal coverage to let light come through. But this is going to give a nice even chalk finish um, because all of the paint that we're using has chalk in it. So this green paint is chalk paint that I made with the spring green paint. For St. Patrick's Day and I had some left over so I'm just going to go ahead and use that and where do you put the dark green squares I think you guys know the answer to that by now wherever the two light green medium green excuse me intersect um, wherever they intersect then that square will be dark okay and like I said once you use the rubber bands the rubber bands do create like a little lip of of paint um, at the very edges so it makes it nice and easy to go ahead and um, and find out where you're supposed to paint. Kind of likes to stay in the lines a little easier. All right. And then once you're done with all your greens, if you want to go ahead and touch up whatever white might have gotten scraped or put off or whatever, um, you can go ahead and do that. While I was putting my rubber bands on, I didn't protect the jar from my table. My table had grit on it from when I had sanded a previous jar. Um, so it did scratch off some of the white paint, but I'm gonna go ahead and distress this anyway, so that's not an issue. If you are not gonna distress your jar, then you wanna make sure you protect um, the painted surface while you're working on it um, to do the other sides and stuff, okay? 
Okay. And right there, you can see a little bit on that one intersected square, you can kind of see the little ridge lines that I was talking about um, that creates that square when they overlapped, which just makes it that much easier, I promise. This one was my favorite so far. Um, if I had to go over and do all of them over again, I would make them all with this chalk paint, um, all chalk paint. That would be my, my druthers. Though all of the techniques that we're going to show you, I think all had very nice results. However, this one's just my favorite result. This is the favorite look that I was going for. So um, one other thing that I'm going to add to this jar that's different than the other jars that we've done so far in the series is I'm going to add uh, the green uh, on the bottom, the dark green on the bottom. This is just a finished, a finishing touch for it. It's not necessary. It's just what I wanted to do, especially since that bottom stripe was uh, white. I wanted to go ahead and just give a touch of the dark green around the bottom. And you could see there, right there, um, that some of the chalk paint disappeared. But like I said, that's totally fine for me. All right, and now we're going to distress it. Um, what I like to do is I like to take my sandpaper and fold it so I have a nice crisp edge. And then I like to take that edge and go perpendicular to the jar and just scrape off all of the tops of all of the raised lettering. And then once I'm done doing the lettering, I just take it and I just dress it around its certain areas. And there you go. That's it. I love it. Like I said, this one's my favorite. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Hopefully you like it too. Give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. I can't wait to show you the rest. Um, don't forget to check out the vlog channel um, and share with friends and family. Anybody who might be interested in learning any of these techniques. Um, and learning how to make these cute mason jars. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.